Welcome to a fresh episode of Digital Fashion Unlocked, supported by our friends at Rug Radio. On this podcast, we delve into the latest insights within an ever-evolving realm of fashion and technology. I'm your host, Melissa, and joining me is my co-host, Carla. Today, we are so elated to have Alexandra Forsyth with us, the brilliant mind behind AF's Retail Guide, which covers shopping, tech, and cybersecurity news. Alexandra's content serves as a guiding light in the dynamic world of retail, illuminating the most current trends, innovations, and sectors ranging from fashion, e-commerce, to luxury, and the beauty multimedia space. Her comprehensive knowledge, coupled with her culturally relevant observations, establishes her as a true authority in this domain. It's evident that when it comes to digital fashion and also retail trends, that the two are interconnected with today's fashion consumer. In previous podcasts, we've engaged with technologists, NFT artists, and journalists delving into their discoveries and this emerging technology. So today, we're going to shift our focus to how these innovations permeate down a consumer's like you and me. So without further ado, welcome, Alexandra. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Welcome, Alexandra. It's so nice to have you on. Thank um, you. Let's get into it. I, I have a question. I'm curious to learn about your background. Um, how did you first become interested in studying the retail industry and, you know, the customer facing aspect um, as well as mm -hmm. branding? So just walk us a little bit uh, to your journey so far. Yeah, sure. So I currently act as a threat intelligence analyst. That's my kind of day to day role. And that very much sits within the umbrella of cybersecurity. So there are various different roles within cyber and threat intelligence being one. I come from a strategic background. And what I mean by that is I focus on the research. So I'll go out there and I'll look at papers, articles, I'll listen to podcasts like this. I will go to events, I'll have a look at the retail industry and see what I can do to inform clients about retail but also cyber security and I worked within the industry for around two and a half years so I studied a master's in criminology and prior to that I studied a bachelor's in criminology also and I don't have kind of a STEM background so I think it's quite nice to say that you don't necessarily need one to get into a role such as cyber because for me I at my master's level I took a couple of courses in cyber security and I just I think I just fell in love with kind of the digital aspect Aspect. you know it's ever-changing the industry is just growing so much and I think it's really nice to kind of stay on top of those trends and that's what obviously I try and do and I think a couple of years ago I had the opportunity to work with a retail client and they were based in the UK and it just gave me such an insight into retail isn't just about going into store and picking up an item it's also what happens behind the scenes and I got such an insight into that from a cyber perspective and I think bringing all of that together into the blog you know there are a lot of different blogs about retail and cybersecurity but I think one thing about AF's retail guide is I want to bridge that gap and bring it all together not just focus on retail and tech retail and tech but also focus on the cyber aspect as well um, so that's what I do try and do with that and so I'll give resources I'll give podcasts I will do a daily rundown of some of the sources I'm finding and yeah it just I think it's a nice way for people to be able to come to the site and I try not to make it too jargon filled or tech heavy I do try and relate it back so someone who may not have that background can still sit there and read it and think gosh I've you know I've taken something away Wow. Yeah. I mean, I think that's awesome that your background is not just um, traditional, maybe a fashion marketer from FIT. You have that criminology kind of research background to really get into like the nitty gritty of like what retail and fashion is. And a lot of it is numbers. It's yeah. not just like putting together a nice outfit. And <laughs> a lot of students, they're like, oh, you know, I want to be in fashion. But you need mm. to know your numbers. You need to know how to do research, you know, to yeah. what the lost and recovery is. And we're definitely going to get into a little bit about that. And, um, you know, given that this podcast is a lot about digital fashion blockchain, mm. the security is highly, highly relevant. Um, yeah. So you gave us a little sneak peek of your retail trend report. And once this podcast launches, 
it's going to be live on your yep. blog. Um, it's a comprehensive <laughs> analyst of the, of the dynamic world of retail and key industry developments, like, you know, what, what's going on in retail media and also, you know, how they're fusing this technology. So can you tell us a little bit about this, this trend report that's coming out and some of the quarterly releases right now? Yeah. So, uh, you know, some of the main points I think that I've touched on in this blog, as I say, focusing retail and cybersecurity, but some of them, I think the retail landscape is shifting. Think about COVID-19 pandemic, you know, you couple that with kind of geopolitical tensions as well that we're feeling there's huge strains on the supply chain, shipping products. So that's kind of one area that we're seeing this quarter in quarter three and quarter four. We've just seen strain on the supply chain. That is the one trend. And also, I think other trends that we've seen are retailers are trying to shift their business model. So rethinking kind of promoting products and trying to get in front of the consumers before they purchase. Um, I put a section in about convenience versus experience driven retail because what we do identify is in the US it's more convenience driven, in the UK it's more experience driven. Um, so in the US you have more one-stop shops like Target, Walmart and Costco, and you have e-commerce platforms like Amazon and eBay. And if we think about kind of convenience versus experience black friday and cyber monday just coming up so you have kind of that promotion driven retail as well and as you mentioned with the retail media again this is something that i think has come out of the woodworks in 2023 we are seeing a lot of retailers kind of use ads and b2b businesses to kind of promote their brands as well and um, so again another trend that we see and then obviously going back to the UK being so experience driven, you know, we have sub checkouts, immersive spaces, live streaming. So video commerce is really hitting the market. You know, when you go onto social media now, I was just on TikTok the other day, just having a little scour around and it amazes me how you can go on the TikTok shop and just purchase something. It doesn't mm -hmm. take much. You can find whatever you want. And it's the same when you go onto platforms such as Instagram again you can look at an influencer that you like or you followed for a long time you can watch their live stream of them trying on a piece of clothing or using a makeup product and then you can go and buy that and be redirected to a retailer site so it's just so convenience driven as well as experience because you're getting that experience at the same time as you're able to just buy something so quickly um, so we're really seeing that heighten as well throughout the whole of this year but definitely will continue I think into next year as well um, and then some of the other trends I think with the experience so if you are if anybody's listening in based in London I attended the Gucci Cosmos exhibit a couple of weeks ago and they've put on this exhibition and it's heavily digitalized it's completely immersive you get to see kind of their 100 two year history through their iconic bags, luggage and clothes. And it's just experiences like that. You know, they prey on the emotion. It's driven by that, the music, it makes you feel something and you come away. And I think that's what retailers are really trying to put out there as you come away and you turn into a little customer. You want to be a part of their world, their brand. So I think we're really seeing, you know, just a little bit more of a focus on the consumer and what they want and their needs and bridging that gap as much as possible. I think it's really interesting. Um, but then I think, I think when you mentioned about kind of NFTs and blockchain, really seeing this again with retailers in the fashion space and um, entering kind of Web3, which is the next iteration of the internet. I think Louis Vuitton launched a, I think they launched their community and private channel on Discord as well recently. Yeah. Um, and that's obviously, uh, it's a nice way of kind of having that private channel for some of their members potentially, but then also having that community and building on that. And we see that again in the metaverse, you know, virtual experiences as well. <clears throat> and then I think going back to kind of the influence around, we have digital influencers. You know, on social media, they gather millions of followers and NARS recently they announced that they'd launched three digital ambassadors and they're actually based off, they hired an actor who was in a suit and they mimic the movement. So it feels real. And again, I think Meta just recently announced um, well-known influencers, they, uh, their Instagram accounts, which they're now acting as a buddy or acting as a friend and you can talk to them. So Kendall Jenner being one and she's given her kind of identity or likeness and Meta has now adopted that and if you go onto Instagram you can actually follow 
the account and in the future maybe talk or feel like you're actually talking to that person so it's just so interesting how technology is being kind of used um, in certain ways but then from a cybersecurity perspective when we think about kind of blockchain nfts being used for your digital assets in places like the latter bus and even generative AI chat GBT has just completely skyrocketed all industries this year. And um, we obviously have to think about what, what me that means for data ownership. What does that mean for kind of GDPR being able to track your assets both physically and in digital worlds? I think with the metaverse, something that we consider now is there aren't many regulations, it is heavily decentralized. And mm -hmm. so you can't you just can't actively regulate those kinds of spaces so anything can happen and that obviously increases a lot of the risk for exploitation from our point of view um, as well. That's amazing, yeah. <laughs> that was a lot, Basically, I think. <laughs> uh, uncovered at least three of the questions we had about how is AI being used? So um, sorry. <laughs> what is the customer experience like? Um, and I think there's so much to unpack. Um, Maybe mm -hmm. we can start with the blockchain aspect to get get it out of the way since we love mm -hmm. <laughs> we love this um, um and obviously we, we deal with it every day uh, being mm -hmm. uh, both uh, developers and myself a marketer um, and creators in the in the web three space um, so mm -hmm. yeah I think you touched upon digital ownership um, also bringing back to that AI personas right on Instagram kind of blurring that line between what's real what's like owned by a real person versus like what's ai generated it's starting to be really hard like i've seen those um ai kylie jenners you know even like models um brands will hire models to um model their clothes but it will be like an ai generated model that just like walks the runway or just takes instagram selfies mm -hmm. um so, yeah, I think from the security standpoint and like the digital standpoint, finding ways to authenticate content and say, okay, this is real versus like this is a bot or AI, like that's mm -hmm. really important, I think, to address quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something you touched upon. So I'm looking forward to see brands like thinking about those challenges as well. Um, because obviously for customers, it's easy to even influence um, positively or negatively because now you have these unreal images right do we want to make these images look super futuristic so we know they are mm -hmm. not real humans or do we make them yeah. you know some watermarks or something so I don't know if you've seen any progress on that side or if it's something that still needs to be worked on yeah, I think it is definitely, uh, from that cyber standpoint, something that needs to be worked on. I think one thing that popped into my head is deep fakes and impersonation. We're definitely seeing kind of a trend and that is skyrocketing as well, um, increasing not so much in the retail space, but there was one example where it was to do with education. And I think ahead of kind of back to school trends, it was something that I covered in one of my other blogs when I looked at retail and education, but impersonating children and their voices and actually calling the parents and you know it kidnaps scams and say we've got your child can you either pay this amount of money or do such and such giving them a set of instructions what's to say that wouldn't be used for retail calling somebody up and saying we've got access to your account please can you give me you know your authentication which could be say a one-time password which is sent to your mobile device to authenticate yourselves to get into your rewards account or just your standard account on a retailer side what's to say somebody who couldn't impersonate a retailer or your bank and call up and say can you give this information that is a way in once they've got that access able to get into your account if you think about the data that you have inside your account you've got your name your email address potentially payment information your shipping your physical address all of these different kind of credentials is what we call them is something that kind of a bad actor or person so to speak would want because it helps them to then go on to maybe purchase on your behalf um, which again means you lose out as the consumer and also for a retailer one thing that we like to look at is kind of reputation as well for the retailer because they will want to help the customer get access back into their account or help them to stay loyal with brand but um yeah it's quite tricky i think to get that across and also i think to make customers quite wary you know make sure that you have the right kinds of protections on your account so as i always say use a strong password you know mm -hmm. 
just kind of education say this podcast for example just listening in getting kind of my perspective but there are like a host of cybersecurity resources out there so I think it's just taking that step back and um yeah just having a think yeah no I that's that's awesome I think with the latest technology everything is first of all at our fingertips and decentralized but a lot of these retail companies have to rethink the resources that they're putting into their security to, you know, their employee training to make sure that their passwords are secure. And also um, giving those giving those workshops to, okay, if this happens or mm-hmm. if someone calls you, here's the protocol to make sure that it's actually correct. Because, yeah. you know, right now it's not just, hey, um, you know, welcome to Macy's or welcome to Abercrombie and Fitch. This is how to use your cash register. But also if someone comes in or someone emails you about, you know, a, um, being a manager at another store or gaining access to our advertising campaigns, you know, these are the steps and protocols that you need to take, making sure that it isn't like a deep fake and, you know, I think a lot of these retail companies, they, they don't have the budget for that yet, but they're going to find out that they're, they're going to need this budget because a lot of these scammers and, you know, that are using the latest technology, um, it's easy to hack into the systems. And Mm -hmm. uh, I think with blockchain technology, um, we have um, our latest trend word is like zero knowledge proofs within identities. And, you know, that really just, delves into who has access to these these operations and then not just access, but like what are the backend steps to make sure that this is a verified source to get access to whatever information. And Mm -hmm. although, you know, this ZK knowledge, like there's so many brands out there, there's Polygon, ZK, EVMs, there's Ethereum, there's so many, Um, we're still building it up, but this is a perfect use case for, you know, utilizing these, this technology within the blockchain space. And I guess this week, uh, the term was, you know, the mission was, we're so back with crypto because Bitcoin <laughs> at $35,000 and, you know, that's an all time high, mm-hmm. but zero, like, like really like zooming in on it. It's, it's like, you know, we really need this technology. We all need to work together and make mm-hmm. sure that whatever we're doing, like we're integrating the latest tax. So I'm super excited that you have that, that knowledge and you're giving these reports to mm-hmm. your readers because it's, it's really necessary. And I wanted to, um, I don't know if you had anything to say about that. And we're just, at- just one, yeah, just one thing. I think there were little points that were popping in my head as you were talking I think your points are fantastic I think the cyber awareness training is a really interesting point I think it applies to both retailers and customers so I think as we said customers to be able to protect their accounts being aware that you know strong passwords having your multifactual authentication so not just a strong password but you can use biometrics now and you could use a fingerprint or facial recognition for that and the one-time password codes and you can actually have an authenticator app on your phone or on right. your device to be able to log in but also I think from the retailer as you mentioned from that standpoint and again it applies to kind of fashion beauty and DIY everything that falls within that umbrella working out with blockchain say what's on the back end so what softwares are you using what do your suppliers and vendors look like so if you're going through third parties for anything to do with software and anything to do with kind of your sites or anything like that just making sure that they're also protected and there's open transparency communication in place as well across kind of the supply chain because that's another area that we look at what does the supply chain look like and so I think that's really important as well that's awesome um I I love that and I wanted to kind of double click on the meta google ray-ban um you know they're all having these like (laughs) Um, and their supply chain, I feel like with Metal Google and Ray-Ban, especially their big companies, they, Mm -hmm. they have a lot that's going for them, but now they have this omni-channel approach to, to shopping. So they're using AR, they're using VR, 
I don't know what those implications mean. A lot of a lot of the modern day consumer or the consumers in general, they're like, whoa, there's so much technology that's going on. Like some people are even fearful. Um, can you just mm-hmm. give us a little, I guess, wax poetic on that, like this omni-channel approach to tech? Yeah, of course. I'm just, yeah. I'm just trying to find a Yeah, I think with the omnichannel slash metaverse slash technology with obviously Ray-Ban partnering with Meta, they have just brought out their glasses. Um, I saw a sneak peek online from somebody that put it on. They look fantastic. They look exactly like Ray-Ban glasses. To be honest, you wouldn't really notice the difference. But I think within that, being able to kind of just heighten the visual for when you take a photo, when you take a video, it just completely enhances the experience. And I think also if we think about the Meta virtual reality as well they've also brought out their headsets um and I think although it's a little bit bulkier um I think it just yeah it just enhances the experience really um as well I wanted to dive into um the part of the report that explores you know um customer uh, consumer sentiment trends in different countries <laughs> and I think you you kind of analyze um, the spending patterns in different regions of the world, for example, um, China versus, for example, UK or United States. I, I'm curious, um, what are some of the major differences that you've seen um, also in terms of uh, fashion and retail brands in the fashion world? Like, are there any differences as well? I think there is actually a similarity, (laughs) which I identified recently, which I will include in the blog, but actually, again, it goes back to that kind of convenience versus experience driven retail. So we have seen a lot more consumers wanting to shop at discount stores and it goes off the back of kind of inflation cost of living wanting the promotions I think luxury fashion is still increasing in terms of sales we have seen a minor decline but I think it you know in terms of the luxury fashion space it's still very alive and well but a similarity we've seen actually across the board I think US UK and China is even within China now the consumers are thinking more how to save money and looking at kind of promotions and discounts which we hadn't seen really throughout the whole of this year but now we're seeing it and I'm you know you could argue is it because of kind of seasonal periods coming up to Christmas people are thinking more about how much they're spending and like I say Black Friday and Cyber Monday really good opportunities especially in the UK you know throughout November we see a lot of sales online through Amazon and eBay and people really capitalize off that they want that um, to feed you know their desires and urges for what they want they still want the same products they still want to shop where they shop but really thinking about how can they do that with a little bit of a budget so I think that's really interesting yeah that's definitely um, a bit of a shift um, what were we used to I, I think um in the past, we've seen a lot of luxury brands entering um, Asian market and really growing there versus um, now maybe we start seeing. Um, and even, for example, this B- Black Friday, for example, in Canada, used to not be a thing as much as in the US, right? And then over the years, you, st- you start seeing it just as much in Canada as in the US. Um, and then you start seeing it in other countries. So yeah, I've definitely noticed that change myself. Where I was like, oh, this wasn't a thing like five years ago and now it's everywhere. Um, yeah. And other yeah. holidays like that, we have like Cyber Mondays and uh, mm-hmm. every reason to have <laughs> discounts. It's a good reason. Oh my gosh, there's so many discounts. And when you were talking about the, the TikTok shop, I think... First of all, TikTok is like a microcosm of like what's going on with culture. So I don't know, right now people are talking about the unbrush and, you know, how this brush is like so. Mm -hmm. I think we lost Melissa for a bit. Let's for a second. (laughs) I had thought of something when she was talking there that I wanted to say as well. No, if, if it's because like the retail space has managed to, you know, help or, you know, just captivate these audiences. So I don't 
know. I guess from my uh, a question, I'm just interested. You said you work with a lot of clients. What are some of the problems that they come come to you with, and what are so, what's a framework, or what? How do you? What are some of your solutions that you can you give us a little example? I guess. Yeah, I think with retail. Also, just wanted to make one point. I think with the TikTok and what I find really very interesting is obviously I think most of people are aware of kind of tube girl right now and I think if we look at kind of brands and how they've you know pulled tube girl in and kind of you know a lot of videos have gone viral again social media what we see is it only takes one post to do that or a couple of posts and completely shifts kind of how brands view I think us as well as consumers kind of bringing us in as well on that journey um but yeah to go back onto your point about working with retail clients I think there isn't a particular framework and I know that's not a good answer so to speak but it very much isn't a one-size-fits-all you know when I look at a retailer I really want to understand you know what is their business and I think that's you know business and cyber so I tend to look at it quite holistically as I mentioned at the beginning when I look at a retailer thinking politically you know with current shifts are happening now it affects the supply chain it affects shipping and getting products to store so that's kind of one you know scenario and then also thinking economically with kind of inflation cost of living for us from a cyber security perspective could that link to more kind of insider threats which are kind of disgruntled employees or they've been let go or there are problems within the retail organization that we need to keep on top of and then we have technology and kind of environmental so we look at all of those aspects and I think one of what retailers want is again for us to look top down understand the business understand their workings what does their kind of value chain look like from say gathering research about the products to then looking at how to build those products getting them to store um, different areas like that and then also bringing in that cyber analysis so what are the key data points where can somebody come in and disrupt the organization and stop them from operating potentially because it always goes back to the consumer if the consumer doesn't get what they want and doesn't get their needs the retailer loses out and also the consumer loses out so they're just they're just so many there's just so much room for improvement but then there are so many elements to kind of a framework for retail which I think is still being kind of defined as we go along um, and like I say it's not a one-size-fits-all every retail is different every fashion brand is different everybody wants different things you know one retailer might want me to focus on supply chain and they might be really interested to know you know I want open communication I want to know who my suppliers and vendors are I want to know um, just different areas of their supply chain and then others might want us to focus on their brand and might want us to focus on e-commerce and their social media and how can that be exploited um, and different ways that can happen as well so it depends <laughs> that's that's amazing I think this really talks to you know the fluidity of this industry and how you can bring in um, competencies for pretty much any area of study expertise and make it translate into something that's useful for brands for um, you know, retailers to like really build their companies and interact with consumers in like meaningful, authentic ways that go a long way, um, right? Not not short-sighted, but really like anticipating what's going to happen. Um, so yeah. yeah, I think like even seeing your background as such, such from a, such an unexpected <laughs> area to, to now being retail and fashion, um, yeah. what, what would be your advice to you know, people who are thinking to switch to working in digital fashion um, and maybe they haven't taken that leap yet. Um, I think yeah, any advice for my, people starting? My biggest, yeah, my biggest advice, I think always remain curious. I think be passionate about what you do. You know, I wake up every day and the first thing I do is look at the retail news or I look at what's going on in the industry for me personally, I really like to know what's happening. It, the landscape is shifting every day, every week, every month. And it's really from a cyber perspective, as well as kind of a business perspective, it's good to just keep on top of trends. So I think remain curious, be passionate and go for it. I think, you know, like I said at the beginning, I didn't come from a background where I had computer science or I had a STEM subject where I knew cyber. It was just always 
wanting to learn, being eager to do that and really just going for it and having that self-belief that you can do anything you want to do. Um, and also, I think the benefit of working with clients as well as you get kind of that top down approach, but also that one to one, you can really talk to them and communicate. So if you're looking to kind of get into that area, I think there are just so many benefits to do that as well. Thank you.